Now then, that's a bit like Jeff Bradshaw, isn't it? Anyway, um, we have a an Aurora Uno two kilowatt inverter here. One of these fairly modern looking things with the rounded corners, and this was running fine, very nicely. Then it started coming up with a ground fault. Now, previously in my experience, ground faults are on the DC wiring side. There's some minor leak somewhere to earth and uh, the Aurora 3.6s are really quite sensitive to that but this is an Aurora 2 and we searched throughout the DC side and couldn't find anything. So at that point I said right I'm going to take it home and try it on the test bench and it came up with the same fault. There you go. So that's a new one on me. So let's have a look shall we. First of all I'll just put an image of the the label of this up and then we'll start taking the top off. So where are we? We have four screws on the top. And there are torques. And they're not particularly tight because I've been in here before. Investigating. And they're a bit bizarre these things. As you will see in a moment. You think, alright, oh, the top will come off and there will be a... Uh, communications ribbon with this top or the display stays um, with the back and this is just the screen but oh no it does that and it's got these little arms so let's just spin around and I'll show you in fact you can probably see them there So why on earth that is the case, I don't know. And um, what we're going to do now, I think I'll have to show you the fittings. So there's these four arms, and there, that's an 8mm bolt. So you've got to undo those four 8mm bolts if you want to get to more than just the general connections. Let's just lift up. The mains in, that's the DC, there's the, th the thermistors and I actually swapped those out and it's made no difference whatsoever. I didn't think it would do. But to get to more interesting stuff like the relays and whatnot, we have to take this top cover off and we're going to investigate anyway. Interestingly this thing here three sockets there's an interesting feature about that that we'll investigate again later on and look it's got a white a GFI where are we? Let me find it. Yeah, That black one is labelled GFI and the red one there is GFI positive. So we've got GFI negative there, GFI positive, and a white. And it says, I'm wobbling about a bit now, up there, ground mode. So it looks like we have a choice. Do you think that will make any difference? Hmm. But interesting anyway. Right, let's get this top off. I'll undo those 8mm bolts and we'll get the top off. Right, 
there we go and there's the ribbon so let's just remove that for the moment okay that's the top gone put it somewhere safe let's just zoom down a minute so these are the arms there we go and this little plastic bush it's like a top hat bush that goes in the inside and then the bolt goes through from the outside and then there are lugs on the bottom on the underside of the top so let's just get rid of these get them out of the way and organize ourselves right so we've already looked at the mains in and the GFI sockets which is where we're getting the fault and I'm looking around on the board for any possible burning but I do know this was running quite nicely and then it came up with GFI and then maybe the next day it'd be fine so it was a developing fault now I'm not really inclined to try and take this board out for the reason being that where are we looking here see those oh, you can't see focus see those big screws down there I think they hold the the FETs in place and there are several of them and so this is one of those complicated issues where it's built up in layers so I don't really want to mess with that interestingly there's some relays there so do you think we should take the tops off those relays don't think it would do any good but it might just be interesting to see what sort of relays they are I think we could probably try um, now we've seen where it says ground mode we can try either disconnecting that or trying that in a different socket one two three it's all a bit and I wonder if this thing here has anything to do with it because it's in the similar area don't know what it is looks like a capacitor of some form I wonder if we remove that totally it's got two legs so this looks like it's going to be one of those uh, investigations where we can fire it up on the bench and mess with stuff switch it off remove something try it again and what have you but I really think I want to have a look at those relays so we've got this on its side and it's firing up and it says checking the grid grid in range error ground F E018 so that's ground fault so as you can see down here 142 volts off the variable power supply isolated and 233 grid so it's there's a, a ground fault so let's switch it off and um, give it another go with something else so what do you think we ought to do take this off here and put it in there yeah let's try that okay let's plug it back in I'll just move the camera around back round to see the screen right V ground 63 volts that's a problem I think 
so it's leaking somewhere. Okay. This is a bit of a weird one. I've done several videos on um, ground faults, GFI. I'll put a link to them at the end of this video. There we are, ground fault E018. Right, let's try again. I'll move it to the other socket and see what happens. Okay, we've got error, wrong ground mode. So that's in the right hand socket. So we've got left hand socket, ground, ground fault, middle socket, ground fault, right hand socket, error. Okay, fair enough. Now we've got that um, little capacitor. I think what I'm going to do is shut everything down and remove the capacitor. Right, we're in the middle socket and I've removed that little capacitor. Oh, there we go again. V ground, 72 volts. Whoop. Yeah. So there's a leak to ground somewhere. But it says ground ISO. See if we can get that again. So there it says self test run V ground 76 volts. It says self test OK. But let's see what happens. Bit of a waiting game. There again, ground ISO self test OK. V ground 72 volts. It's probably too much. Error E018. Right. OK. Let's do the unforgivable and remove the earth from the main supply and see what happens then. Even without an earth, so there's, you know, this effectively, we've got an isolated DC supply that has never given us any problems before. And we have the earth removed here. It's still saying that there's a ground fault. So that is clearly nonsense. And this is that little piece of kit that I removed. If anybody knows what that is, I'll put it back in. But this is just going to go in stores. And as far as that relay is concerned, where are we? I've shown you with the label. Really difficult to get the top off that. It's all sort of moulded in. But that bit there, that's one of the contact arms. But really tricky. You would almost destroy it to get that apart. So I stopped. Typical, isn't it? So there you go. We really didn't get that very far. We've learnt a few things, and hopefully you've learnt a few things from this. Um, I need a bit of advice on this. I did all sorts of combinations, the different sockets, and if you unplug that GFI uh, cable, then it just comes up with wrong mode. Who can tell? I think there's a leak somewhere in the board between the AC, between the DCs between the positive and negative DC somewhere or 
the, the software is acting up or a sensor is acting up. But how are you going to find that? I don't know. So comments, much appreciated. And um, it's always quite good fun to get other people's opinions on stuff as long as it's sort of fairly logical and not abusive. And I will catch up with you very soon. Cheers for now.